As a Christian, you may be thinking, vegan? But Jesus ate fish and lamb. And if Jesus did eat meat and fish, then it can't be wrong for me to do it right. I definitely used to think this. So join me today as we talk about all the points of Jesus' diet and how you can still be an ethical vegan. Let's start with lamb. Now, while there is absolutely no scripture claiming that Jesus specifically ate lamb, some people assume that he and his disciples would have had this during the Last Supper meal. However, during the Last Supper, the Bible only mentions bread and wine, but people will argue lamb would have been an obvious choice that didn't need to be stated. However, there are some valid reasons why I believe Jesus didn't eat lamb. In his book, for Love of Animals, Christian Ethics, Consistent Action, the author Charles Camacy gives three reasons that Jesus didn't eat lamb. The first argument is, quote, Jesus and his disciples often defied the religious laws and customs of the day. We see this when Jesus and his disciples pick grain on the Sabbath, when Jesus heals on the Sabbath, and just because something was customary to do or to eat on the Passover doesn't necessarily mean Jesus did that thing because he defied other strict religious laws and customs during his time. Second, it isn't at all clear to scripture scholars that the Last Supper was in fact a Passover meal. Now, I've heard this point argued a few times that the Last Supper was the night before Passover, the night before when the lamb would have been sacrificed. So then the Last Supper wouldn't have been a Passover Seder where lamb was traditionally served, but just a standard Jewish meal. There's a great article I will link below that will go into more detail on all of this. But in this argument is the fact then that Jesus would have been sacrificed on the day of preparation, the same day that the Passover lamb would have been sacrificed for the Passover Seder meal. And Jesus being the Lamb of God, being sacrificed on the same day as the Passover lamb seems pretty timely to me, which leads straight into the third point. Quote, the symbolism of Jesus' sacrifice replacing the old sacrifice of the Passover lamb is too perfect to ignore. During the Last Supper, Jesus gave bread and said, this is my body. He gave wine and said, this is my blood, which is shed for you. He is replacing the Passover lamb being eaten with bread and wine, a vegetarian vegan meal that is to show that he is the sacrifice. He is what we put our trust and hope in now. He is who reconciles us with God, not this Passover lamb. If a lamb was served at the Last Supper, don't you think it might have been mentioned by Jesus, Lamb of God, or by his disciples in order to draw a parallel between Jesus and the Passover lamb? It's just too perfect. Why wouldn't they have mentioned it? Okay, okay, so Jesus didn't eat lamb, but he ate fish. He most certainly ate fish. Now, I'm not here to argue that Jesus didn't eat fish, although you could find that, but I'm not here to make that argument. I will say there is one instance in the entire Bible that shows Jesus eating fish, and it happens to be right after his resurrection. So let's get into that. That's going to be Luke chapter 24, verses 40 through 43. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they still could not believe because of their joy and amazement, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and he ate it before them. So this verse doesn't even say that fish is part of Jesus's normal diet. But what this section in the Bible is trying to say is that Jesus was resurrected physically. He's actually there. He's not a ghost. His disciples, joy, amazement, disbelief, doubt, they think he's probably a ghost. And to prove to them, I'm not a ghost, give me something to eat. They give him a piece of broiled fish. He eats the piece of broiled fish to show them, look, I'm physically resurrected. So that doesn't have to do with Jesus's normal diet at all. That has to do with Jesus being resurrected. But let's go on to say that it's not just that verse, but that fish was part of Jesus's normal diet. Then, haha, then you say, I can eat fish and it's totally fine. However, we live in a vastly different time 
than Jesus did. Jesus lived in a time with a lot less viable food options. It's argued in the book For Love of Animals that in the ancient Middle East, there were a lot less adequate sources of protein than we normally have today. Uh, it's also argued in the book that if Jesus ate fish, it was most likely out of survival rather than the reasons we eat fish today, which are taste and convenience. Also, our modern fishing practices are wreaking havoc on our world, something they weren't doing back 2,000 years ago. The way it is, bycatch, which is the incidental catch and mortality of non-targeted marine animals, is estimated to be 63 billion pounds a year. That's 40% of catch that dies and then isn't used for food but is discarded back into the ocean. That accounts for 300,000 whales, dolphins, 100 million sharks, 250,000 turtles, thousands of birds, and billions of unwanted fish and vertebrates dying every year. The last point I wanna to make to you is that just because Jesus did something doesn't mean we have to do that exact same thing. Jesus also didn't get married. Jesus also didn't have biological children. Jesus also walked everywhere he went. He wore sandals and robes, things that maybe we do differently. But what we are compelled to do is to love as Jesus loved, to show mercy, to love justice, and to walk humbly amongst one another and the rest of creation. I don't eat animals and their byproducts because I can thrive while showing love and compassion to all of God's creation. It helps my health, it helps fellow human beings, it helps animals, and it helps the environment. Why wouldn't I be vegan? Because of habit and tradition? Those are two things that Jesus replaced with love and mercy. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Please give this video a big thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or if you have any quandaries or things that you would want me to talk about on my YouTube channel and click that big red subscribe button, of course. Ding the little bell right next to it so you get notifications so you don't miss a second of my videos.